Hey guys, I am Game Advisor, and welcome back to another Icarus update video. Today, we're going to be talking about the Waterworks Week 14 update, so let's get started. Now, this update has a lot of major changes. So with that being said, let's just go ahead and jump right into it and start talking about what some of these things are. The biggest change is that you're going to have to use water in order to do a lot of different things now. The biggest one, of course, is going to be doing farming. Water will increase your growth rate by what I believe is 50%, but do keep in mind that the water growth rate could change over time. In order to do this, you have a number of different ways, one of which I believe is going to be just filling up a water canteen and dumping it onto the actual crop, but you can actually set up a pumping station now that will pump that water directly into the crop plot. There are also now three different tiers of crop plots available. You have your default wooden one, just like we did before, you have your metal one and you have your advanced one. Now the metal one will work just like the advanced one does however you can't put on its own light to it so you can't grow it inside otherwise you won't have that light buff. You also do have to keep in mind that you have to have a greenhouse still if you want to get the buff for that. We'll talk about how they kind of fix the greenhouse a little bit later but basically what it boils down to is they made it so that you have to have more glass blocks nearby for it to qualify as a greenhouse and give you that greenhouse buff. You can no longer just place one single wall and call it a day. They've also implemented a sprinkler system inside the game that will now help you to put out fires in case your house actually happens to catch on fire. This sounds really interesting to me personally as it just sounds like a fun way to do it. However, considering all the high tier buildings can't catch on fire, I do hope this is going to be a lower tier thing that won't require us to build like stone buildings and be at that technology level otherwise there's really no point in building a sprinkler anyways because you're just going to build a better tier building at that point along with the water and all these other things we also have farming talent improvements there's a lot of talents that either got reworked or simply just got straight up added to the game these are going to be down here in the change log so i'm just going to read some of them off to you the new talents and changed existing ones based around the whole farming thing are the all-nighter one, which makes it so crafted crops in crop plots will grow faster during the night. Neat and tidy, which makes crafted crop plots use less fertilizer, which is a whole nother system they've also implemented into the game. We'll talk about that here in just a minute. You have Shoot the Breeze, which grants the recipe to make gunpowder out of your fertilizer in the mortar and pistol. Get Off My Lawn grants the recipe to make the Rusty Shotgun, which is another new thing they've added in and we'll talk about later. We've got Speed Grow, which makes crafted crop plots just simply grow faster. That sounds like a good talent if you're going to go down this tree. You have Bumper Crop, which crafted crop plots will yield more crops. Very straightforward. You get more when you grow stuff. Sturdy stocks. This makes it so any crops you grow in a crop plot will spoil slower whenever they're harvested. Increased yield from harvesting by hand. And increased base stamina and increased melee damage. Again, these are just some of the new or reworked ones right here. These are not necessarily every single one that's been implemented in the game or adjusted. These are just the ones that were reworked or were done in this specific update that are related to farming. Now, on top of adding all the new talents and adjusting some of them, they've also added in an additional mission into the game. This mission is gonna be called Agriculture Hydroponics. I think that's a great name for it. I think they've been needing to put in a long-term mission like this for quite a while, and it will require you to grow crops instead of just picking them. That is a huge deal. I'm so glad they're doing this because if they make it so that you actually have to grow them, it kind of forces you to engage with the farming mechanics of the game, something I think the game has been lacking quite a bit. So I'm actually glad this is now in and I hope it's a mission that people will actually give a shot. We will probably be making a mission guide on it, so do look forward to that if that's something you guys are interested in. Otherwise, I'm looking forward to do this mission personally here in the near future. Now, they also talked about fertilizer. Fertilizer is going to be done in the composter, which you can put spoiled crops and spoiled food in in order to actually get it to turn into fertilizer for your plants or to turn into gunpowder or whatever else you're going to use it for. But the idea here is that now you can have a use for that spoiled meat, for those spoiled plants, which now have their own separate decay item, same with spoiled fruit, and be able to put them inside your composter and give them a use. So I'm actually kind of glad they put this in because before
beforehand, if say a carrot spoiled, you just got nothing out of it. Now at least you have something you can do with that spoiled carrot if it does spoil. Just to give you another thing here related to the water network, they've added in crafting speed modifiers to the cement mixer, composters, and kitchen bench whenever they are directly connected to a water pipe. This is great because it just gives you another reason to care about adding plumbing to your house. Now we can actually make it so these things will craft faster by hooking them up directly to water rather than going ahead and just using them anyways. It's also worth noting that this new composter will actually speed up the decay rate of anything you put into it. So don't use it to store your meat unless you want it obviously to decay or any other crops for that matter. It's just something worth mentioning. It will increase the rate at which it would normally decay. So if you did just want a bunch of spoiled meat, I'm assuming you probably could, but it might turn it into fertilizer before you can use it. So keep that in mind. They've also implemented a new crop yield stat, which will increase the quantity of crops you get from farming. I'm pretty sure what this means is basically the better conditions you're growing your plants in, the more yield you're going to get in total from growing that crop. Pretty self-explanatory. Like we talked about, the greenhouse also needs to have extra glass in order for it to qualify as a greenhouse now. They've also doubled the amount of time it takes before crops will spoil and can no longer be harvested. They've also updated just the visual look for corn, lily, berry bushes, squash, watermelon, pumpkins, cocoa, coffee, green tea, and wild tea. They've also made it so if you leave a crop in the planter for too long after it's finished growing, it will wither and then die. This is part of how the new farming system works, so it's just something to keep in mind. You do have to get back and actually pick your plants after you grow them within a reasonable amount of time. They've also made it so that beans in the game can be consumed like other vegetables like your carrots and your pumpkins, but they also come with a decay timer now, so do keep that in mind. They do need to be in an ice box or a refrigerator of some kind in some way. Otherwise, they will start to decay now. So that's just another thing they've implemented into the game. And it gives you a reason to actually bother picking these plants because beforehand, we were only getting one or two beans and you needed 50 to make a single tea. But now you can actually eat them individually, which is kind of nice to see. They've also increased the platinum and titanium spear thrown projectile damage. So if you like spears a lot, that's going to be a plus for you. They've also also finally made it so that you cannot one shot an entire cave wall if you take the lucky strike talent. If you didn't know this and you had the 1% chance to instantly mine something talent, this would make it so if you hit an entire stone wall, you would just keep hitting it until you got that proc and you'd end up with like 5,000 stones sometimes. So I'm glad they took this out. It was way too OP. Getting 500 to 1,000 stone from a regular stone is already more than enough. They've added more caves to the lower right arctic area. They've now also added a Fahrenheit option to the temperature display, so all you Americans like myself that don't actually use Celsius know what temperature they're actually referencing. I mean, it's just a nice quality of life thing, and I'm glad to see that implemented into the game. It's something I've personally been wanting, but it was by no means necessary, so big thank you to the devs on that one. That's something that will definitely help me, and I think a lot of other Americans who play this game out. They've redone the layout of the solo talent tree a little bit, so that's something else to keep in mind. And there is a lot of other things the devs have said that are not in this actual update page here. They even say in here somewhere that, hey, we just didn't have enough room to fit everything on it. So just keep that in mind. There's a lot of other bugs and crash fixes along with many other tiny tweaks and balance changes. This is a very big update, if not one of the biggest updates they've done in quite a while, aside from the respec update that I know so many players were wanting. If you haven't checked out Icarus in a while or came back to the game, now would be a great time to do so as they've added probably about 10 new missions since the game's launch, along with several new mechanics, bugs fixes, and many other things. So I highly recommend if you haven't been playing it or you have friends who haven't, now would be a good time to say, hey, maybe come give the game another chance. It's got some tweaks. They've changed how the game works and it actually plays much better now. With that being said, I would still love to see some new mechanics in the enemy types within the game. I think that's a big thing Icarus needs. At the moment, pretty much every enemy other than the Sandworm and Caveworm 
just kind of run at you and try to melee attack you, which is fine and all, but I would like to see some more variety. I mean, we are supposed to be on an alien world. I understand that it's been terraformed to be more Earth-like, but, you know, I'm sure they can come up with a way to implement maybe like that alien dog we saw in the trailer into the base game, along with many other creatures. You know, they're just, it would be nice to see some variety in our enemy types that don't just run at you and try to attack you. With that being said though, I am Game Advisor. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you want to see more Icarus and other survival game content, do consider subscribing to our channel. We put out update videos on Icarus every single week, every time they put out an update. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching once again, and I'll see you next time.